How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I want to talk about the console.time method in JavaScript. So console.time allows you to count how many milliseconds a piece of JavaScript code takes to execute. Before that though, we're going to look at the old way of timing your JavaScript code. So, the old way. Let's see. Let's make a new comment saying old way just like that. Now the old way involves uh, before you write any code out that you want to test, you want to make a new date object marking the time before you put some testable code. So let's make a new constant here called start equal to a new date object and that will save the date and time in this current moment. So now inside here, well down here, you put the code that you want to test you know how long it takes. So let's make a new alert box. We're going to test this alert box right here. Let's say for the alert text, uh, how's it going? Simple as that. So now when this code runs, it's going to pause everything else below it until I dismiss the message box. So below here, we're going to make a new date object similar to the startup here, but instead call this one end. So end equals a new date object marking the, the end of the code to time. So we have start and end. We now simply need to log out start, sorry, uh, end minus the start. So the end milliseconds in time minus the start milliseconds. So now if we save this and you know test it in the browser, we should see the result. We'll refresh. I get a box. Press OK. That took 1,990 milliseconds. In other words, it took just under two seconds. And that's the old way. So now, the new way using console.time is much simpler and easier to read. So, instead of this new start date object, we'll get rid of this and instead say console.time and passing in a string here, which is going to be the label for the timer. So we'll say the label is decode. And that marks the beginning of the timer called decode. So now on the bottom here, we'll get rid of these two lines and instead simply just say console.timeend. So time end is one more method. And here you put in the label of the timer, which you want to say has now finished. So we're going to start this timer, decode, and then end that timer on the bottom here. So if we save this and then go in the browser, refresh, we see we get the same result, but it's formatted with the actual label here. And also it's rounded, sorry, it's presented down to the, what is that like? 10th digit on the bottom there. So much more accurate for visuals here. Just for the sake of the example, I'm going to get rid of this right here and instead do some maps uh, to time the maps instead. So let's make a new a variable called total. We're going to add some numbers up. So we'll say four, n equals one. We're going to add numbers from uh, one all the way to let's just say 10,000. Then we'll say total plus equals n. This is a quite intensive, I guess, operation and we'll test to see how long it takes. Save this one, go in the browser, refresh. That took 0.56 milliseconds. And that is how you can use the console.time and console.timeend method in JavaScript. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.